told Catherine before you guys came on, and as, I, as usual, I'm completely unprepared for anything I go into, so I had no clue who you are. Um, nice. And, uh, and uh, then she gave me a little spiel of who you are and what you do. But I would like to, you to say that, because I'd like to hear, and also everybody who's hearing this uh, would be interested, or seeing this is interested in who you are and what you do. So we can actually start off on that, I guess. Well, um, yeah, I, I used to be a basketball player, <laughs> um, but... How tall uh, are you? How tall are you? I'm not that tall. I'm only 193, six foot three, but... Uh, That's pretty tall. Me, this is not, this is not, a, a, this is not a, a low basket because this is from a game. I can try to show you on my phone. If you can see it, we'll see. Uh, this is how I used to do it. So the white guy who steals the ball, that's me. And then uh -huh. this yellow dude is trying to come and, and get me. Let's see. So. All oh. right. Oh. So I used to jump. I used to jump high. You know. <laughs> so it's not about the height. It's about how high you jump and how quick you do it. Yeah. Um, no. So I used to uh, play, but, but what uh, happened when I was... Um, 18 and coaching some younger girls there was this father of a girl who was working in a school who asked me if i if i could take some substitutional lessons at his school because he said that the way you talk to the girls as a coach is a very uh, very correct correct way to address kids you give them the you take you respect them you take them seriously at the same time you demand something back on how they should behave, how they should behave towards each other, how they should play the game. So he asked me if I could come and, and do some substitutional lessons at his school because he, he, he said that I think some of the guys, especially the minorities, need a role model like you to look up to. So that's how it all started when I was 18, 19 years old. I took some substitutional lessons as a teacher. Uh, first I was an assistant and then they gave me some lessons to, to, to deal with alone. And that uh, the, so my first year as a substitute teacher, they go, gave me more and more responsibility. And I also connected, especially to the guys who were uh, outgoing, frustrated, angry, uh, with a lot of luggage. And uh, I used to take them, uh, I used to, to talk to them in the lesson, in the free time, in the, in the breaks, uh, instead of sitting with grown ups, I was more interested to, to understand the story of why he was so mad or un unfocused in the lessons. And within the first year as a teacher, I, I ended up getting a lot of results with the, with the boys, especially that were so frustrated and always colliding with my colleagues. Uh, because of course, when you have a, a grown up who at one point uh, gets mad at you because you're frustrated, then they get in the, into this bad tango and, and it ends up with this kid being more frustrated, kicking a chair, and then threatening the teacher, and then get kicked out of school for three days. And, and if you ask this person, for example, instead of getting frustrated in front of the class and humiliating them in public, I would always wait till the breaks and then call them back and ask them what happened, why were you so mad at me? And then when we were alone, he would explain, well, it's not you, I'm just frustrated about my father. What happened with your father? Well. He got drunk this weekend again, and I had to fight with him. What do you mean fight? Well, he attacked my sister and my mother, and I had to, you know, knock him out. Like, what? You knocked out your father? <laughs> yeah, he was so drunk, you know? And if you're like 14 years old, and you have to protect your little sister and your mother from your drunk father again, which is for him a typical weekend, it's very strange for me as a teacher to expect for him to be focused and ready to go on Monday morning. Which, which I found was very, very unfair to these kids. So when you started talking and getting those stories, I started to try to build bridges between my colleagues and these kids because they needed us to understand instead of getting frustrated at them. And I think there's no kid in the world who would like to be frustrated or get pissed or get violent. It's just the reaction of a story that we don't understand. So that's why I... I got more and more interested in these stories and I also started to get more and more results with these kids. And a lot of my colleagues had to end up coming get me to, to calm them down uh, because they were so frustrated in others' lessons. 
which was very interesting because I was one of the youngest teachers with less experience than most, but I still had the interest and the relation uh, to help them. So I made those rules that I still keep. And it's one of the most important rules when you work with kids or work with people in general, is that you have to understand that people has a tendency to listen more to people they like than they, than those they don't like. So it's always about the relation to build this fundamental the fundamental relationship between two people so that the communication will work. Uh, and we will always, you know, both listen better and, and try to understand what you're saying. If you don't like me and I don't like you, I'm not even trying because I'm more, I'm more interested of, uh, more interested in, in, in why you're so stupid than what you're saying. So it's the way, uh, so it's this, this, this basic rules when it comes to working with kids that, that I think a lot of people need to remember. So another rule is that we have to understand that my demands can never uh, overcome. They have, my demands have always to match the relationship, the quality of the relationship. So you can be as strict as you want as a teacher, but you need to build the relationship first so that when you ask the kid to calm down or sit down, they, they, they are motivated to do so because you have the relationship. But if you don't, they will get more frustrated and you will be the trigger for them to get, get more angry. So when people ask me, well, are you always positive and kind? I said, yeah, but, but I can also be very strict and, and I can be as strict as my relationship allows me to be. But I need to build that foundation first and, and, and invest in the relationship. So it keeps, it always comes down to the same, same basics. It's build the relationship, make sure that the kids you work with know that you like them that you that you want to, to, to help them because you're generally uh, genuinely um, genuinely interested and then you can you know start demanding and push them in the direct in the direction that that can be uncomfortable but they know it's safe because they trust you so yeah I learned a lot of those things the first year in school and I still follow those basic rules and and they uh, have a tendency to help me and the last one is, of course, it's not me who makes the change. It's them. It's them. But I need to be a, a smart f facilitator and maybe also a good motivator. But at one point, I have to understand that it's not me doing the change. I can only be coaching. I'm the coach on the sideline, and they have to do the work. So which means when they get the results they get, it's them who needs the credit, not me. And a lot of people working with with kids who get results they have a tendency to be proud of the results they made and forget that it's not you it's, it's them and you need to you need to put the credit where it's where it belongs um, because i i have a tendency to see that every time we fail with kids we have a tendency to blame them and then we forget to take the blame as a grown-up so so yeah 